you can significantly improve your running speed, race times, without actually getting any fitter or making any physiological adaptations to training. Whether you're a sprinter or a marathon runner, the core principles of running speed are the same. You can either increase your step frequency, step length, or both. And what I'm gonna be talking about today targets both of these in the correct way. That is increasing your stride frequency through reduced ground contact time and increasing your stride length through utilizing more optimal timing or force application rather than trying to deliberately overstride, which can actually be detrimental to performance. Now, nothing's gonna beat having your own biomechanical assessment done where you can get very personalized metrics measured. There are so many facets you can measure, way more than I can discuss in just one video. But the concept I'm discussing here is so simple and will impact nearly all runners. In fact, depending what literature you read, this is gonna impact up to 80 to 90% of runners. That's why I think this is an important topic to share my knowledge on now that I'm starting to build a little platform on the channel. You may have heard the term or been told that you're a heel striker or rear foot striker. And if you haven't heard of that, all this is is when you're running, you land with your foot lands with the heel first. So the heel makes the first ground contact. The first thing to mention here is a heel striker. When, when us biomechanists view heel striking, what we see is they spend 0.01 seconds longer in contact with the floor for every step than a mid or forefoot strike runner. That is 0.01 seconds not going anywhere. That's time wasted. You might be thinking, well, 0.01 seconds is hardly noticeable. And you're right, it isn't for a single step. If you were looking at someone with a naked eye, you wouldn't be able to count either being in contact with the ground longer than that person. But running is way more than just one step. So this time adds up. An average runner has a cadence of 160 steps per minute. The more of an elite runner you become, that 160 becomes 180 and even 200 steps per minute. Let's take 160 steps per minute as the baseline. Times that by 0.01 and you're at 1.6 seconds longer in contact with the ground for every minute of running. Now let's say they're a 20 minute 5k runner. For that 1.6 seconds now becomes 32 seconds. So simply by landing on a more optimal part of your foot can take a 20 minute 5k runner to under 19 minutes 30 without being any fitter. But it's actually even better than that. Now as I mentioned at the start of the video, changing your foot strike pattern is also going to improve your stride length. So foot strike pattern's also gonna take advantage of larger forces being utilized at more favorable times. This is a typical vertical ground reaction force profile over time for a heel striker. Many of you might have seen these before, but what often gets overlooked here is your shin angle in relation to when the force is being produced along this graph. So Newton's third law of motion is very applicable here and you need to understand that. So quickly, for anyone who doesn't know, so Newton's third law of motion states that for every force produced, in this case, the force you apply to the ground, there is another force applied equal in magnitude or size, but acting in an opposite direction. Why is this so important here? Well, if your shin angle is out in front of you at ground contact, which it is when you see a heel striker, it is. The opposing force is acting in the opposite direction to what you're running in. So essentially, you're breaking. And this initial spike at the start here is seen in all heel strike profiles. This spike contributes to loading rates being higher, which has implications on potential injuries. But that's a whole longer discussion for another video, because today we're focusing on the performance side of things rather than the injury side. To move forward, you have to apply force to the ground in one direction and the reaction force applying in the other direction will push you the other way. So you, as a runner, want to be pushing off at the point of maximum force, which doesn't actually happen when you heel strike. The shin angle is 
far closer to 90 degrees than a negative shin angle, which is associated with the, the push off the toe off phase. Compare this to a four foot strike profile. Not only are they stuck in contact with the ground for less time, but they aren't producing these braking forces, causing them to temporarily slow down with every single step. I'll combine this with the fact that their shank angle or shin angle is at a way better position during the propulsive phase where the force is at its highest. So they're traveling slightly further with each step without trying to. They're not even trying to put more force into the ground, but they're getting more of, of the reaction force out of the ground with each step. So this improvement comes simply due to the laws of motion. If you can improve your running form and how your foot lands on the floor, you don't even need to be able to produce more force since the timing of force application alone will result in improvements. To simplify things, all you have to think about is landing correctly and the rest will take care of itself. Your stride length will lengthen because you have more force produced and your contact times will decrease so your stride frequency will go up. Okay, you've heard the science behind it and you might be thinking, well, that's all well and good, but I'm a heel striker. I have been a heel striker ever since I was a kid. So that's a shame. My body's just not built to have the most efficient running form. Well, actually, foot strap pattern is not genetically determined. It's not something you're born with. So you can train it, you can improve it. Like Kenyans, for example, they are predominantly four foot strike runners. And the reason for this is not because they're born four foot strike runners, but it's a product of their environment and their surroundings and their upbringing. They all run around a lot at kid, as kids barefoot and in the Western world, like myself, we were, from a very young age, made to wear big heel dominant trainers and running shoes, which essentially make it way more comfortable to land on your heel when you run. And that is, that is it, that's the reason. It's not that we were genetically made to land on our heel, it's just a product of, over time, we've got used to this. Whereas Kenyans, or I don't want to say just Kenyans, but over time other people haven't. What I will say is, up until now, your calves and your Achilles are probably underworking. So if you're planning to transition to running with a more mid-foot, four-foot strike, which I suggest you do, by the way, I would just say, take care while doing it because you're all of a sudden gonna be working your calf and Achilles a little bit harder than what they're already doing currently. And the best sort of way to know you're doing it properly is to take advantage of your proprioceptors in your feet. If you're putting on socks or you're putting on shoes, you're essentially making these receptors numb to your surroundings. It'll be like trying to type on a keyboard with ski gloves on. So the best thing you can do when getting started is to start barefoot on the spot walking, lifting your knees up and placing them down directly under your body on the, on the forefoot or your midfoot rather than landing on your heel first. Get your body subconsciously feeling that mind to muscle connection of what it should feel like when you land on the correct part of your foot under your body. And from there you can gradually start to implement jogging on the spot followed by jogging not on a spot and eventually build it up to running. Just do it gradually. But Thanks for watching people. Please share with anyone you think might benefit from this. And yeah, in a bit, yo.